Hey there, welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Francine Sinclair. I've been around the block in the entrepreneurial world, creating and repurposing social media content for experts and CEOs. I know firsthand how it can feel lonely, especially when you're mixing your Christian faith into your business life. So I figured, why should we go it alone? Who said that faith and business can't mix? And that's where this podcast comes in. Join me as we meet influential Christian entrepreneurs who are showing us how to blend business and faith in a way that works. We're here to prove that you can express your faith without compromising your business success. On the Influential Christian Entrepreneur, you're not just listening, you're part of the gang. So let's start this journey together. Welcome to the Influential Christian Entrepreneur Podcast, where we uncover the inspiring stories and strategies of successful Christian entrepreneurs. In today's episode, we have the pleasure of interviewing Annalise Vance, owner of Never Miss a Moment Consulting. Annalise is a mommy of two children who are three and under. She's a human jungle gym, and she's been married to her hobby and business partner for 16 years. They handle advertising for fathers who own family-owned businesses, and they help them be at home and to be present with their families. Thank you so much, Annalise, for being here today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Francine. I really appreciate you. Thank you. And I... I, I feel like I finally have one of my people. I mean, everybody's one of my peeps, right? The entrepreneur community, but you in particular, because you're a mom, you're a homeschooling mom. And, you know, I don't know if I told you a story that I was a um, stay at home mom for 13 years. You briefly you know, told me. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, before I was a Christian and everything, I was stay at home mom for 13 years, I had two kids. And then for the last, five years of my daughter's school, I, I, um, homeschooled them and, and for five years, my son and my daughter, but then after COVID, my son decided to go to Christian school. So, so I did homeschool for five years. So I feel like, okay, we have a lot in common, most definitely. And then, you know, running a business (laughs) at the same time. So I am so happy to have you here to tell us a little bit about you know, in your life, um, uh, Annalise, have you always been a Christian or did you somewhere down the road in adulthood just, you know, have a Jesus come to Jesus moment or how was it for you? I literally did have a come to Jesus moment. Uh, so I was raised in the church. Um, mm-hmm. I was raised in youth group and this is not to put my parents down. Um, my, the church I was raised in, they were wonderful people, but I always say that they just missed the point. I was raised Lutheran and I went to a Catholic school and Lutheran's about a step below Catholic. And since we're on a Christian podcast, I guess I can say this, but, um, there wasn't a lot of room for the Holy spirit in the church I was raised in. Um, I knew about God. I knew about Jesus as a character in the Bible, but Mm -hmm. it was pretty much there was a week and there was a Bible verse and that was what the sermon was on. And it was slightly different than the year before. But if you had asked me growing up, I would have totally told you I was a Christian because I went to Mm -hmm. church and I went to youth group Mm -hmm. and that's like, was literally like where I hung out. So Mm -hmm. obviously as most Uh of my stories do, uh, involves my dad. So, um, my dad, um, was saved at a Billy Graham revival. I guess is what you call it. Um, And so he always would talk about his faith. My mom, not so much. Um, I actually led my mom to the Lord um, right after my son was born before, somewhere around there. And um, anyway, it was March of my senior year of college. And my mom was upset with me again, uh, because we're both very strong willed, just kind of like a combo like me and my daughter. And She was mad that I hadn't applied to any colleges. Well, Francine, as you've learned a little bit of us interacting, I'm very much a purpose person. So I was like, I don't have any colleges I really want to go to. And that's a lot of money. Like I just haven't been led. So my dad, the peacemaker came in and he said, Hey, I'm going to be in Boston the same week as your spring break. Why don't you come with me? Well, Francine, all I heard was going on a trip with dad for a week. Like that's all I heard. And I was like, sure, I'll go look at colleges. No problem. 
looked at BU, Northwestern, but when I walked on to Boston College's campus, I didn't know what like feeling something in your spirit meant at the time because I hadn't learned about that yet, but I just knew that's where I was going to go. Didn't know why. It just, it felt like home. And I applied, I was on a waiting list. I wrote an essay and I ended up getting in. And I always say that God led me to Boston to meet Jesus. And then he brought me home to meet my husband. Because I had grown up in youth group, there was a women's, I guess they wouldn't call it youth group in college, but like whatever they called it, like women's like ministry group or whatever. So it was familiar enough that I felt comfortable, you know, coming and associating Francine, they would talk about having conversations with Jesus. I literally remember I was like, like you talk to him and he talks back. And (laughs) I'm like, okay, keep your punch away from me. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I kept associating. And, you know, they, as I think we all should, when we live out our faith, they, they just, they didn't apologize for what they talked about or what they believed, but they didn't push it on me either. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. And so I was invited to go to church and it, it was, again, I'm, I'm, I can have a thick head. Um, so I would watch them raise their hands in worship. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I want that because just, I mean, you know what I mean? Just the look of peace when someone's worshiping. And so one yeah. Sunday I was like, God, like, I, I want this. Like, I don't know what it is. I, I never formally like said a prayer or anything, but for my personality to raise my hands and surrender, I mean, that's pretty dang close, you know? And it was, again, it was a process, um, over a really long time. And I won't get into my whole story unless you really want me to, I mean, I'm an open book, but Um, Let's just say there were a lot of things God had to heal along the way, but Mm -hmm. um, there were like instant changes. Like I quit drinking and I told my boyfriend at the time that certain things were not allowed anymore. And we ended up breaking up and I ended up meeting my husband. And I would say it again, it was over a process just because there was a lot of healing. But recently in the last year, Mm -hmm. um, I was sitting and listening actually to a story about the prodigal son. And I always knew the story from like the prodigal son standpoint, but like, I was always more like the older brother, um, just very self-righteous. And I would say that was like the last layer that kind of had to be peeled. Um, so, I mean, I was, I was a Christian and a believer of Jesus and all the way through, but like I recently got rebaptized. I don't know, within the last year, um, after listening to the story and realizing like how self-righteous I had been with my husband, with my kids, just with myself. And so I kind of had like a part one and part two coming to Jesus moment, um, just over the years. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's the the quick version. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, do you notice lagging here? Mm, I don't bit. know. Maybe we're you're lagging good. a little bit. Can no, you still good. hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Wow. So th- I think that, that your point goes to show that a lot of us start out in some kind of church mm-hmm. and then, like you said, it's really just about routines many times and just kind of rituals. And like, I came up Catholic and I would pray, you know, pray rosary every day, but it wasn't really connecting. Like, you know, it's just something you kind of do, but you weren't feeling it. Right. Right. You, when you don't feel something, it's like, ah, you know, and then when I would, I remember going to a Pentecostal church and with my boyfriend at the time, which was, oh my God, I was probably 18, 17. And they were Pentecostal. This was in Puerto Rico. And um, they were, you know, speaking in tongues and doing all that stuff. And I could not help myself, but I was holding my laughter because it was like, these people are crazy. 
you know, this is just nuts. Um, you know, why, why does it happen to them? And it's never happened to me, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, we don't understand what we don't understand. And then the thing right. is, we don't even know we don't understand it. And so, and it's not until we come to, to find Jesus for ourselves yeah. that then things start to click. Right. And all of those things we used to say were just crazy. Now they're like, oh, right. So right. I completely uh, agree with you there. And so now you and your husband, I'm assuming you don't, do you belong to any denomination or denominations even necessary? Like, how do you we raise you your family now? The teachings of Jesus Christ. Um, I mean, we go to church and mm -hmm. I always joke that non-denominational just means Baptist. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but really, I mean, we're just, we believe in the word and we stand on the word. Um, I think it's hard to find a church that models that in its entirety. I, I feel like mm -hmm. they do their best. Um, mm -hmm. but we also believe when we go to church, we're not going to get, we're going to give, we're going to worship. Um, we're going to give back and, um, I mean, if we, if we learn something helpful and we absolutely, I mean, of course you're going to, cause you're hearing the word, right. And another yeah. person's perspective, um, our church recently just did a whole uh, series over the summer on wisdom and it was really, really good. So I'm, it's not that I am saying I don't learn anything, but our heart is to go spend time with our father and have mm -hmm. our kids in church and them learning. Mm-hmm. And, and there is something to uh, what, where it says in the Bible that when what two or more get together in my name, gathered. so that could be well, and part of too, the reason I mean, why you go to church. We, you and I are having church right now, girl. Um, yeah. Like church is not a building to me, I guess. I'm yeah. just piggybacking off your point. Um, I mean, I had church mm -hmm. with my friend on Tuesday night, just having big girl talk. And yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm whenever you're gathered with believers, like good stuff comes out. So. Absolutely. 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 And there is, there is a, I noticed that there is a, a big difference when you are gathered with believers versus non-believers, when you are coached by a believer versus a non-believer. I totally thought that was nonsense in the past. And just recently I'm like, okay, I don't have words to describe it. And I think the, 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 the words to describe that would be, that, for example, if I'm hiring a coach who's a non-believer, she can only give me a worldly view of things. Right. She can't add that additional dimension, which is the most important dimension, right? Well, which is God's view, the word's view. That and mm -hmm. I mean, your spirits can't connect. I mean, they can try, but not exactly. like... Um, yeah, I was recently that the same... It, it was my best friend, um, and we were chatting on Tuesday night, and Mm -hmm. Um, she was just going through some, a, a difficult time. And, and I reached out to her and I, <laughs> my version of joking isn't always other people's version of joking, but I'm almost like, basically like, Hey girl, like you've been ghosting me. With her. <laughs> and, um, she confided in me, you know, what had been going on. And, and I had no idea because she's not one to share. She's very much one to keep it to herself and not rock the boat and all of that. And, um, I said, you know, I could feel in my spirit, like you were somewhere else, like your spirit was somewhere else. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think that you can mm -hmm. have that connection. Um, it doesn't make them bad people and it doesn't mean that right. you, you won't eventually, but like even my mom, um, who was saved and the, the last two years, like under two years. I mean, I connect with her on a thousand, a million percent different level than before because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can. I mean, she was always my mom, mm -hmm. but like now she's telling me like, you know, what prayer she's learning or, um, you know, a spiritual battle she was going through. Like there's just a different level of connection. Mm hmm there is, there is. Yeah, I 100% agree. And, and I am just learning how to appreciate that. And yep. that's why I would recommend anybody, if you are a Christian and a Christian entrepreneur, seek, seek 
uh, if and you're looking for like a life coach, for example, even a business coach, but I would say more more than business, a life coach. You, you really should look for a believer, but also you have to be discerning because as lately I've been on my soapbox talking about how some people will use the name of God and will use the label of Christian to as a marketing strategy, you know, and um, we have to be able to discern, although we can't judge because we can't see hearts like God, we're not God, but right. Many times you can see through it when somebody's just using it as a marketing strategy. And some people will just outright talk about being Christians and they will scam you. So you just have to, you can't just take everything for face value, get to know people's heart a little bit as best as you can. And they go from there. But if you have a choice between a Christian and believer and an unbeliever, a believer will probably, you'll get more bang for your buck because you'll get that spiritual dimension that you, you, you don't right. get with people. Right. And so, you know, this, the premise behind the podcast is, um, you know, we've always been told that we should never mix religion and business, politics and business, that mixing religion with business is bad for business. And I wanted I to know what's your opinion on that? that? I was I was just laughing because my mom always said, don't talk about or my grandpa would say, leave your sex, politics and religion at the door. And I would always say, what else is there to talk about? Um, <laughs> which might be uh -huh. the answer will be. Um, you know, you just talked about discernment and I, I think that you definitely need to, to use that because, um, I'm never going to hide. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. if you go on my profile or you read my posts for any length of time, you're going to know where I stand. And I, mm -hmm. I don't apologize for it, but I also believe there's some people that they're never going to experience Jesus any other way. And God put you guys together. And if you're one of those people, cause there's a lot of church hurt out there mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that have just been well-meaning, but ignorant, you're going to mm -hmm. lose them. And mm -hmm. I think it's just meeting them where they're at. But if I can, like, for instance, like uh, Chris Lomas is a really good example. I think I connected mm -hmm. you with him. Um, he's in Moldova mm -hmm. and we connected a week or two ago through Deanna, um, in an audio room and, um, we're both believers. I mean, so we'll get on in the comment section and I might've told you this, but you know, be like praise to the almighty and, mm -hmm. you know, like quoting scripture and, or in a book I read or, you know, so we get it out there. Right. But we're not like someone has to like go all the way down to the comment section and like read it all. And so I figure if at that point. Mm -hmm. Like if they're doing that, mm -hmm. like they probably maybe meant to, but I'm mm -hmm. not going to shirk away if he's like quoting scripture and not like join in. Right. Or in, you know, right. praising God or, or any of that. Um, so, and I, I've had, you know, it's about building trust, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of, if you're building your business on social media, um, especially LinkedIn, I don't know. So I don't know about so much about Facebook. I mean, I feel like the people on there, you probably already know I can trust, but, mm -hmm. um, in LinkedIn, you're going from like no connection to trying to bring them through. And so first they have to feel like they know you, then they have to like you and then they have to trust you. And so mm -hmm. um, I never, and Francine, you might be better at this than me. I'm never the best at like chapter and verse, but there's basically Paul talks about like, don't be a stumbling block for your brother or your sister. Mm -hmm. So like, I never want to do that, but like, if I mm -hmm. feel prompted or I feel led or it's appropriate, you know, and it shows up like some comment sections, I mean, will have nothing to do with it, but some like it'll lead there. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I guess the word I'm searching for is organically. Um, I let mm -hmm. it happen. Um, but I'm, I'm going to yes. be me because one of my favorite tenets I live by is if I have to be someone like, if you meet a canned version of me, right. I then have to be that person mm -hmm. every time. And that right. is exhausting. And so if I'm just myself, like, if you don't like it, if you want to unfollow me, like, cool. It, I, it's I'm just being yourself for any one particular person. Um, but I am going to be mm -hmm. myself. And I mean, every single, I, I talk about marketing and advertising, right? So it's not appropriate for it to probably be every post. 
Um, but the comment right. section, right. And it's, it's going to show up. Um, if you have a virtual coffee with me, like I'm probably going to say, thank God, or God did this or whatever at some point. Um, just cause mm-hmm. I'm, I'm talking about myself or if they ask about my story, like I'm going to say like, mm-hmm. God slammed the door of me being in corporate and opened the window of me, you know, owning this business. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to shy away from giving him credit. And if someone gets him the credit, absolutely. I I did a post. Then that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I did a post about, um, I refuse to be susceptible to the cancel culture and I'm not here to talk about that or get into any of that. I think we we're all, feel free to say whatever it is that you want, but Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to not offend your sensitive nature. It's like, if Mm -hmm. you brought your toes to my post and they get stepped on, like maybe they needed to. Right. Like uh-huh. when someone gets offended, I'm normally like, all right, so what truth in here did you need to hear? And, and why are you getting upset about it? You know? Right. Um, but my heart is not, I'm going to write this to offend this group of people, but that's not my heart. Right. Exactly. But if it happens, you know, like last week I got some advice from a coach that was like, You know, and my first reaction was, well, this and well, that, but I I slowed down and I was like, okay, Annalise, what's the truth in this? That what are you, what are you needing to hear? You know, like, why is it upsetting you? Um, and, And I worked through that and I realized there was a lot of truth in it and I've made changes and it's made me more effective, but I feel like our culture, Christian or not, and honestly, Grinzine, sometimes Christians are the worst at it, um, is so mm-hmm. easily offended. And I just, so I don't have mental offended. energy to deal with all of that. Like <laughs> I'm a wife, I'm a mom, right. I run two businesses. Like I, I don't have time to be offended. Right. Right. Um, People so. will be offended. I mean, the thing is you brought a, an important point because like I spend <clears throat> my primary, um, platform for myself, um, has been Facebook. Um, and I'm slowly transitioning more to LinkedIn. Like I've done more work for clients on LinkedIn, et cetera, but I feel like, you know, it's almost like, I don't know if it's the people that I follow or the people that I'm connected to where it feels like two, two separate things. I feel like at Facebook, I'm in, 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 in a living room at a house. Mm-hmm. And then on LinkedIn, I feel like I'm at work. And so I've struggled with the idea. Well, I posted this on Facebook. Is it appropriate to put on LinkedIn? You know, and that back, back and forth goes in my head, like, uh, like, you know, I don't know the people on LinkedIn as well, but then again, I have to be myself. Yeah, I don't want to seem. And so I think a lot of people struggle and just decide, and just like, oh, forget it. I'm just going to keep religion out of. And that's another thing. Religion, right? Religion, because yeah. people attach religion to faith as right. I think as a way to dismiss it and excuse you know, I, I don't know. I feel like it's an excuse that we use. We attach the religious label or some people feel that's why a lot of people run away from, from talking about their faith because they feel like, okay, it's religious. And so <clears throat> I, I don't know where I was going with that, but um, I, 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 people I are afraid. I, I heard what you're saying. I, I hear where you're going. Um, I'll come back to the Facebook versus LinkedIn point. Cause I think that's a great conversation and kind of fits into what I mm-hmm. do. So can maybe add something. Yeah. But I don't know that it's, I don't know that their heart is to dismiss it. Um, I, I think they've been hurt, right. And facing hurt is, is tough. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, my brief story, like super brief, um, Mm-hmm. is I overcame a 20 year eating disorder that, um, you know, Jesus mm-hmm. healed me from. And when I was eight and when I was 20 boys did things that weren't nice to me. Um, mm-hmm. and so facing that took a lot of courage. Um, and people aren't, aren't always willing to be courageous. Like, I mean, it, it takes a lot of guts. It, it takes, a lot of trust. It it takes a lot of vulnerability and letting Mm -hmm. God, you know, just heal you through it. Um, Mm -hmm. and you know, I am 
president of Control Freaks Anonymous recovering. Um, so <laughs> for obvious reasons, but it's not always easy to let go of that. Um, men or women, you know, I mean, I, I could say like, especially women, but I, I think men struggle with it just as much. And so I don't know that they're dismissing it like out of like, you know, like an attitude. I think it's just like, ugh, I, I'm, I'm just not, ready. they don't want to be that guy. They don't want to be that guy, you know, that guy no, that, that wants too. to, and, I mean, one rule of thumb is to just be vanilla. Um, but, and that's boring, <laughs> There's <laughs> it is, but it, it only lets people know a certain level of you. And for some businesses, yeah. like that's enough and that's okay. And they don't need to go there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. what I would say well, about that's true. So many directions about Facebook versus, um, LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn is an entirely different platform. Um, I would say Facebook is maybe more for writers. And what I'm learning lately mm -hmm. is LinkedIn is more for copywriters. Um, you yeah. know, it, it is more business. It is more professional. And mm -hmm. a lot of people are there to learn. And mm -hmm. what I would say is... Don't apologize for who you are or what you're passionate about or what you're putting out there. You know, you always want to talk to a niche, right? Like I've been told that I'm the only female wife, mom who's advocating for dads, like not just in marketing, but like anywhere on the platform. Francine, that was not my goal when I went on, but I knew where my mission field was right? Because there are plenty of women and will be plenty more that are talking about women empowerment and I'm all for it, mm -hmm. but there was nobody talking about advocating for dads. For men. And one of the things that empowers me the most is when my husband's home, um, there is an entirely different atmosphere in my heart, in my spirit, with my children, in our house. And so Yes, I'm speaking to dads and yes, I'm advocating for dads, but I'm advocating for the women, the wives and their children who will get the benefit once the dad is home. So it's, I'm advocating for the family is really what family, I'm doing, yeah. but I'm doing it by talking to dads. So talking to men, writing in their language, right? Like one of my customers says, I'm at least just put it on a post-it note. Okay. Which is kind of like the same as like, fit it into an iPhone screen, which is my current battle right now mm -hmm. that I am, I am working on. So I will post something way lengthier on Facebook with people that, I mean, Facebook mm -hmm. is friends and LinkedIn is followers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, mm -hmm. this was the Holy spirit. So we're going to go here. Um, Jesus had followers and then he had disciples mm -hmm. and he spoke to mm -hmm. them differently. And he's going to, if we use the analogy of Facebook or LinkedIn, if Jesus was here today and, and talking, mm -hmm. he's going to host something different to his disciples than he is to his followers, right? Because his yeah. disciples already know his heart. His disciples know how to take something and not being offended by it. Right. They already know him a lot better. His followers are still sinners. He, he did not shy away from that. Um, but he spoke to them. He spoke to them in parables. He spoke to them in short stories, right? And there's a lot mm -hmm. of we, we could do a easier whole to absorb thing about this, right? But it's you want people to keep coming back, right? Like my friends on Facebook are going to come to see the pictures of my kids, and yes, I talk about never miss a moment on there if it's appropriate. But I don't put every LinkedIn post on Facebook because it's just it's not exactly. Um, it's not relevant, correct? But and so. For you, the same thing, like everyone might not be, but um, I'm also learning about repurposing content right now. So could you take something you wrote on Facebook and then maybe break it up into a series on LinkedIn and do shorter bite yeah. size? So people are going, who's this Francine? Yep. She's, she's doing personal branding for men. Um, and honestly, when, and Brian, I think connected us, but when I saw your profile, I saw personal branding for men mm -hmm. and I went, 
who is this chick? Oh my gosh, she does a podcast. Like we need to meet. Like it drew me in because you were specific about your audience. And I'm like, I'm talking to men. She wants to help men. Like, what could we do together? I could tell you were a Christian. Like there were so many things that broke. It's because I put spirit led men. You did. <laughs> um, and, and I don't think you should take that off because that's your audience and that's who you're trying to attract. And you're not trying to attract every man, but exactly. It, it broke down so many walls so quickly. And then mm-hmm. we had our virtual coffee. Like it, it just versus you saying just personal branding, like totally right. different message. Um, but if you're doing personal branding for spirit led men, like what are some tips to give to them? That's like Mm -hmm. short and I'll Mm -hmm. fit. Um, you know, can you repurpose any of your stuff from Facebook? I'm sure. Absolutely. But I would Mm -hmm. say it probably needs to be in a different format, which is something Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have told you a week ago because I hadn't learned it yet. Um, but if, to me, the goal of LinkedIn is to have the greatest width in reaching people. And I've said that yes, my ego is not so important that I need credit of I wrote this amazing piece. It's not about right. Me. It's who read mm-hmm. this, who reached it, who's following me now, who can lead me to someone else that I can then help that next family have the dad be home and be present. I love that. You know, that's how you and I connected so well, because I am a firm believer in, you know, you know, in the past few years, we've been, there's been all this talk about masculine, toxic, toxic masculinity and, and, and all of this stuff. And I feel like we've tried to cast aside men and only be about, oh, divine feminine, everything that's feminine is good, this and this. And specifically, I wanted to help men who are Christian business leaders with being able to, to incorporate their faith into the, into work. And the solution that I came up with was, was, was that was using it from a personal story when speaking about faith use it in the, write it in a first person as a personal story that adds another dimension to you. Well, yes, we are speaking about your business acumen, you know, having articles uh, uh, written, et cetera, because the secular world loves, you know, a success story, right? right? But these men in particular, they're trying to use, they want to do more with their business. They want to continue to build their business as a ministry and the devil has been really successful at using social media. So why aren't we Christians right? <laughs> maximizing the opportunity? Amen. Because we're like, oh, we don't want to look like Jesus yeah. freaks. Or we're... And these men in particular, they're very well-respected. They, they've they been successful in business. But how do they build that faith-driven personal brand on LinkedIn without looking kooky and without looking like <laughs> they're going to hit people upside the head with the Bible and just seamlessly right. incorporate it to there. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the format is different. It, it needs is. to have, I wouldn't write the same for them for a Facebook, which usually these men use Facebook for personal reasons for the most right. part. LinkedIn most men, is the business. Most men business owners do. I actually just had this conversation. Yeah. Um, most of my customers don't have a business Facebook page. If they do, it's not active, like very few and far between, but they do have a very active personal page and Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. are not shy about the fact that they love their family and that that's, that's who they're about. So a hundred percent. And, and I think you're, because that's what you do is your personal brand, right? So like Mm-hmm. In today's day and age, like if I'm really checking someone out, I'm going to your Facebook page. I'm going to your business page. I'm going to your LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, follow the breadcrumbs. Yeah. And, well, and I wouldn't say I get a lot of flack for it, and I, I don't know that I'm the only one that does this, but I very much have a process when I connect with someone because the word connect to me isn't just like clicking a button. It's like, mm-hmm. is there a connection? And I think some mm-hmm. people move through that sooner. But what I do is if you follow me you know, it automatically sends that like connection request. Yeah. Connect back. Cause I don't know who you are. Um, yeah. I mean, even when Brian introduced us, like I didn't know who you were. Um, there mm-hmm. were a lot of things where I was like, 
I want to get to know this lady. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know you, but then I'll follow some of your content. And we did that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, all right. I like it, right? She's speaking my language. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, because not everybody does. And if you're doing LinkedIn, doing LinkedIn properly, if you're utilizing that properly, (laughs) yeah, copywriting here. If you're utilizing LinkedIn properly, you're not trying to talk to everyone, right? Absolutely. Um, And some people are like, "Oh, here she goes talking about her family again." I'm sure someone's had that thought. Yes, I am, and yes, I will tomorrow. And you're welcome. Um, Uh huh. There's another picture of her kid. Like I people are. Cause some people don't put pictures of their kids and I'm like, I believe my kids are protected and they're adorable and I'm going to put them on here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, and I, Oh, I just had mommy brain. I apologize for MC. I completely forgot. <laughs> I, I, I got distracted my, by my cute kids. Carry on. I, uh, if you remember, like bring me back, but it, it's, gone. yeah, no. So, <laughs> sorry. Audio. So it, it, you know, it's, it's about, uh, that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I'm a firm believer that LinkedIn is a very useful tool and that we don't have to oh, like directly post Thank everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So yeah, if, if you're utilizing LinkedIn properly, you're not trying to talk to everyone. Um, but I'm going to follow you and I'm going to see if, if I, if I'm constantly scrolling past your content or I'm just like, mm. but like, Mm. If I'm like drawn in and I'm like, Oh, what's she saying today? You know, like mm-hmm. those are the people that are my people. Like we were talking about at the beginning. And then right. at some point I'm all, here's what I'm also checking. Are you commenting on my stuff? Mm. Are you commenting back or am I the only one who's only commenting on yours? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not that I am owed. That. It's a tit for tat. It, right. Yeah, it's not like I'm owed that, but if, if there's a connection, there's a conversation. And right. if I'm not saying anything that you want to respond back to, like, I don't need a one-sided relationship. I don't have time for it. And so right. it, it's not like, again, like, I'm not going to comment on yours if you don't comment on mine. Like, I probably still will. But after a while, like, if it's just me commenting, I, I'm probably going to unfollow and be like, that's okay. Because you know what? Jesus does sit off his sandals too. Like, it's all right. It, yeah. It's not personal. But if we're commenting on each other's stuff and if we're like, if it's leading to conversations or if like it sparked something where it led over to a direct message, Mm -hmm. if that, if we're going to have a connection, it's going to lead to a conversation, a virtual coffee. We're going to have a good vibe. Our spirits are going to connect, right? If we're Christians on, um, Mm -hmm. on that call. And then I'm going to hit connect because now I know who you are, right? But there's some people, right? And you know what? We made it all the way through. We did a virtual coffee and there's just not a connection there. Guess what? I'm not hitting connect. And and you know what? You probably don't care because right, exactly. it, it just, it, it's okay. Like, and, and I'm just more patient with the process. Um, mm. I could have way more followers. I could have way more connections, but mm. it's having that and having you show up in my feed saying something that just I'm going to scroll past anyway. It takes me away from my purpose and where I really need to be intentional and put my time. So I hope that. I I agree. And I think that, you know, in us using social media, I think part of what I'm trying to bring this to is that we Christians probably need to be a little bit more vocal. And it doesn't mean you need to post scripture on your social media feed, you know, but it does mean when in, 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 in not being afraid to bring the name of God or Jesus when making comments for when commenting, right. Thank God, thank Jesus for whatever. And, and, and because we need to saturate in our case, we're on social social media with these messages. I feel so strongly about it. And the reason why is because I've been a Christian for only three years, a real, what I consider a real Christian, right? For three years. And the reason was because I saw things here and there that planted a seed. Yes. People, the people who did it had no idea they were doing it, but the Holy Spirit used that Right. And so we need to be vehicles for the Holy Spirit and we can't be vehicles for the Holy Spirit and the online business space. If we're going to keep quiet and just talk about business, business all the time and never want to talk about 
any of our faith. And because we're so concerned about what other people think, but the only person we really need to impress is Jesus. We need to be more concerned about impressing him and not be so concerned about looking a certain way towards other people, because that's not, that's not our purpose here. So that's where I wanted to bring it to, you know? No. And I, I do not disagree. Um, the only thing I would add is just when I'm led to and when it feels appropriate, like Mm -hmm. I'm going to randomly hop on, say like Mm -hmm. someone I follow, like talks about being effective on LinkedIn. Right. Yeah, exactly. If it doesn't common fit, sense has to play in there too. <laughs> if it doesn't fit, like and and you know what? I think it's okay also if like that stuff happens in direct messages or on virtual coffees, like if it mm-hmm. doesn't get there through the comments, like I think that's okay. But when there mm-hmm. is a time and like if I know the other person I'm talking to is a Christian and it it, it can lead there, I'm not gonna stop it from leading there. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Not to shy away because I feel like people have just completely drawn back in fear. And so God didn't, he didn't give us a spirit of fear. So all I'm saying is we need to not hide our light and we need to bring it out more, whichever way makes sense to you. Um, but do it regardless, whichever way there are many different ways. And right. so that, that's the yeah, whole message. We can, we can also talk about what's important to God without, like, if it's not, mm-hmm. like you said, um, common sense to, like, say thank God or whatever, like, we can still talk about a tenet that's important. Like, I was actually mm-hmm. thinking of a verse before I hopped on here with you of, you know, God said it's it's not good for man to be alone. Well, it's also... Mm-hmm. And, I've said this too, and I'll say this again. I have so much respect for single moms, single dads, um, moms that are home with your kids, you know, while dad's out providing, that was my story, (laughs) Mm -hmm. except for five years of my life. But I think God's intention was for Mm -hmm. the family unit to be home. And so to take all together. Mm -hmm. And even if I'm not saying God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I'm talking about Mm -hmm. something that is near and dear to his heart. And that is rooted in scripture in a way. And so I think that pleases him too. Um, if yes, absolutely. Topics that are important. Like I will always do a Friday favorite and 99% of the time, Francine, it's going to be a picture of one of my kids with my husband. Cause that's going to be my favorite moment mm-hmm. from the week. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm going to talk about family and I'm going to talk about, you know, um, I, I mm-hmm. I've gotten some flack that I, should go back to the 1950s and you know families do it different now and I'm like that's great for you <laughs> <laughs> don't you love that well um but you know what? they were pretty happy in the 1950s there's a lot of movies of happy right, right. In the 1950s they might have traditional like, yeah you know, gotten something right and my husband knows like I mean I'm not the submissive well I am submissive but like not the What's the word I'm looking for? Um, subservient, you know, like doormat. Mm. Like I, I yeah. have opinions yeah. um, more than he would like, I'm sure sometimes. Um, but we mm-hmm. were best working together um, and using yes. our strengths. And um, sometimes that looks like me taking the kids so he can work on an account. Sometimes that looks like him, um, you know, taking the kids, which he is right now. So I can be on here and be the face of our mm-hmm. business. Um, but it, it's a partnership and it, it takes both of us. And, um, Eve was created to be Adam's help meet and complete him. And absolutely. So that's the message I'm trying to get out. I might not be putting on there, you know, Genesis <laughs> and chapter mm-hmm, and verse, mm-hmm. but like, that's what I'm talking about. And I will un- yeah. do it as long as I'm, yeah. Alive. And so. Society has been for a long time under ma- undermining the family, you know, undermining yeah. the family, undermining Absolutely. the value of men in the family. Oh, yes. uh, you know, everybody wants to be a girl boss. Um, retiring your husband is a flex. Wife. Yes, if he wants to, <laughs> you know, yes, if he wants to, but like, what way you're going to retire your husband so he can be your assistant? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, you know, we've, I feel like we've gone in the wrong direction. And so, 
I, I think it's going to take us women to, to, to pull back now and say, hold on, <laughs> enough is enough. Everything has its place. You know, we are different. Men and women are different. We have our different roles. And um, we cannot dismiss the man's role. And women just, what, we're going <laughs> to, yeah, there are some jobs that I've seen men doing, like those oil drilling jobs and the heavy machinery. Yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to do that. Let's be honest. We, we, we physically can so right. men have their, 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 they keep the world moving. I mean, they do. We have our own area where we excel and it's okay. That's why God created a balance. And we've been too preoccupied with upsetting that balance and, 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 and doing things the opposite way of what God wants them to be. And while at the same time saying that it's virtuous and everything else. So those are tactics of the enemy. We, we just have to say what it is. But um, luckily, I think things are changing for the better and um, good people like you out there and all of the amazing people. My gosh, you know, the Holy Spirit inspired this podcast. And since I started this podcast, I have met the people that I was craving to meet. And I'm like, if, if, if the podcast, I know this podcast is going out there and it's probably planting seeds of people and people, and it, it may affect people in some kind of way. I might never know it, but just for myself, what it's done, I mean, it was, I see now why, you know, I was led to do this in, in so many ways. So well, uh, wonderful. You. I think it's great that you're talking about this. There's, there's a lot of people out there talking about business. I think you um, definitely have a unique slant and I, I applaud you, um, because it took a lot of courage to, I think obedience takes a lot of courage. So. Takes, takes courage. It takes courage and you have to battle that fear and that, that fear that held me back for so long. And quite frankly, I was just bored with, to be honest with you, of course, this was inspired by the Holy Spirit, but part of it is I was just bored of the same conversation, people saying the same things about business over and over again. But the most important thing in life, right, which is God, has never been given that never being given credit. God never, nobody ever gives, hardly anybody gives credit to God for anything. You know, it's about us, how we achieve things. And so I, I got fed up with it after a while. And that's why I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, speak my mind. <laughs> Not everybody has to do it the way I do it. I, I will tell you, I have never talked about the things I've talked about here on another podcast. So I think it's <laughs> I, and I probably never will. Yes, absolutely. I knew that, you know, since we're on a Christian podcast, like I knew our conversation was going to be good because the mm -hmm. enemy tried to get in there with strife with me and my husband, right. As he was walking out the door. And I just was like, I literally, I was like, it's so funny to me because he's not creative. Right. I read recently right. that, um, because, um, the heel bruised the head for Satan, it affected his mind and his creativity. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's true, but I'm like, sounds good. Makes sense. And, um, <laughs> I was like, I, I was literally like talking to him when I was upstairs before I came down to talk to you. And I was like, not too smart, are you? Like, you don't think that I recognized that tactic. Like, I'm going to be more bold, right? Like, it, you're not going to shut me down. But I also told my husband, I was like, stop. I need a good attitude going into this. We can talk about this later. Like he's overcoming some symptoms that I just overcame. And I'm like, look, I know why you're feisty. Like I get it. It's cool. But like, mm -hmm. it's one of the things we learned in the wisdom series was just sometimes like say less, like don't say that one next mm -hmm. thing that's going to like cascade. Blow everything over. Right. Yeah. I have cascaded to act. I totally and, get it. That's one lesson I'm learning. I didn't understand fully what was happening and that's okay. And I'm not mad at him. I'm like, I can explain it later. And some things don't need to be said now, but I knew this was going to be good. I was jacked. I was like, all right. I was like, let's go. <laughs> Cause I was like, there's no other reason that that just tried to happen, you know, but if yeah. I had been, you know, another more general business podcast, which I've been on and I, I enjoyed just as mm -hmm. much. They're just different. I wouldn't have been so aware that that's what was happening, but because I was getting on mm -hmm. the Christian influential podcast, I'm like, all right, all right. 
So <laughs> yes, yes. And I appreciate you for being on the influential Christian entrepreneur. He tried a similar tactic yesterday, did, did some stuff on this Riverside FM um, where I didn't have enough disk space, then made me spill all my water. All, it was a disaster, but I, we got it going. So, you know, we just have to pull back a little bit and say, hey, we're going to get this done. And so how do dads that fathers who need your help? Now, you work with any fathers, whether they're Christian or not, correct? Oh, absolutely. Or yeah. do you work? Yeah. Okay. So how, do, how would dads reach you? A couple different ways. How would they reach um, you? Yeah, the, the most place I, or the place I'm the most active is LinkedIn. Um, so you can, it's, you can see my name on the bottom. That's Annalise Vance. And if you're listening to this, uh, it's A N N E L I E S E and then Vance, but with a V for victory and, um, search that on LinkedIn. I'm on there. You can follow me. Um, you can send me a direct message. Hey, I heard you on Francine's podcast. You also can go to my website, nevermissamomentconsulting.com, go to the Let's Connect page, send me a message there, let me know. My, Like I said, my process is generally a virtual coffee. Let's see if we connect. Let's see if your goals and your budget line up with what I can help you with or one of my marketing vendors can help you with. And um, yeah, I if you're feeling torn between spending time in your business, like needing to, and spending mm-hmm. time where you know you need to be with your kids. Like if that's mm-hmm. like a, a struggle that you have in your heart, we need to talk. Mm-hmm. And it, one of my hashtags on LinkedIn is dads matter. And the world mm-hmm. isn't telling you that, but you do, you, you matter. And whether your wife tells you or not, whether she's putting on a strong face because she you know, feels like she, that's just what she needs to do, or she's doing it out of defensiveness. Cause I've done that. She needs you. Mm-hmm. And yes, kids sure as heck need you. And yep. there's a lot of things that you can do in your business, but there is only one group of people you can be dad to, and that's your children. And only mm-hmm. you can fill mm-hmm. that role. Um, mm-hmm. Holy spirit just took over my mouth there, Francine, but um, <laughs> It is so, that is such an important message for me to get out. That is why I do what I do. Um, the five years that my parents owned a company, mm-hmm. we were a family and I mm-hmm. love my dad. And there's been a lot of healing there. Um, and he was always doing it from a heart to provide. But when he went back to work, when I was 16, that's a critical age for a girl to have her dad home. And I would have made mm-hmm. some different decisions in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't seeking attention and mm-hmm. they were my choices, it's not my dad's fault, mm-hmm. but I love that when my husband comes home from our offsite client or comes out from helping somebody, their first in- inclination is to bum rush him at the door. And, you know, my, my son needs a male role model, right? Cause he has a, a mom mm-hmm. and a sister. Mm-hmm. So if not, he's going to be walking around in rainbow boots with a tear on his head and, you know, uh, a mm-hmm. colorful girly jacket and, and not that there's mm-hmm. anything wrong with that, but like eventually that seeks in, but you know, what he does now is he tries to put on daddy's shoes and mm-hmm. he tries to put on a backpack to be like daddy. And mm-hmm. I love that because mm-hmm. again, with it not being about my mm-hmm. ego, I don't know how to raise a man. I'm not one. I, I, I need that. Mm-hmm. And, and my mm-hmm. daughter needs her dad. And I want, Mm -hmm. I want for the rest of her days until she finds her husband for her to be seeking out attention with her dad and for him to set such an Mm -hmm. amazing example that only someone at his standard and above is who she marries. And yeah, those things matter and they they matter. They need you. And I would be honored to help you with that. But that's my heart about what I do and why I do it. So. That's amazing. Thank you for being so brave. And guys, everybody listening to this podcast, I know that 
you know, we've gone on about marketing, family, so many interesting topics that, you know, Annalise and I share a passion for. And I don't think I've said that if you are looking to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook under Francine Sinclair or on LinkedIn. I'm also there, Francine Sinclair. If you are a man who is a Christian business leader and you are looking to navigate the intersection between faith and work and think that social media and building a personal brand on LinkedIn to help you achieve that purpose might be a good idea, make sure to hit me up there on LinkedIn or Facebook, or you can find me on hello at francinesinclair.com. I sure hope that this um that this episode elevated you, gave you some inspiration, some ideas, and maybe made you feel a little bit less alone as a Christian entrepreneur in the online space. So that's it for today on the Influential Christian Entrepreneur. I want to thank you for listening and have an amazing week. We'll be back next Tuesday. Thank you. If you're a Christian business leader or executive, I invite you to work with me to create a faith-driven personal brand on LinkedIn that will empower you to navigate the intersection between faith and business. Feel free to contact me directly at hello at francinesinclair.com. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow me, Francine Sinclair, on Facebook or LinkedIn. See you next week for a new episode.